So I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Lynn Early. Lynn Howard Early has been teaching history, sociology, consumer law, and economics for 37 years. He now serves as Senior Biomedical Policy Analyst for the Organic Consumers Association and chairs its 44-member International Science Oversight Board, composed of scientists, physicians, and policy analysts from 11 countries. 18 of its members are experts in low-dose radiation. Early is a member of the Radiation Research Society, Michigan Universal Healthcare Action Network, American Association for the History of Medicine, and the National Writers' Union. He is also a charter member of the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., and a life member of the American Federation of Teachers and National Education Association. Thank you for being here, Mr. Early. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of a throwback for me because back on the back table, I just picked up a book. Of course, I'd like to walk off with it, but I won't. Uh, we Almost Lost Detroit by John Fuller. I just happened to have interviewed Mr. Fuller not long after he wrote this book. And uh, it just uh, started a quest that I've had for the last 40 years of investigating risks from low-dose radiation. It's an incredible quest because what has happened is that many of the groups that are in the anti-nuclear field don't have any experts on what is the greatest threat to the human gene pool. That is, the emissions that have already taken place throughout the world. And they've been well documented, except the Western scientists don't want to admit it. And so there has been this long period of radiation cover-up, the latest of which you're seeing take place at Japan with the Fukushima Daiichi reactor. And right now, uh, the reports are coming in that indeed the situation is much worse than it has been previously reported. So, <clears throat> as the situation developed, I, uh, one of my board members on the International Science Oversight Board happens to be Alexei Yablokov. And Professor Yablokov is a well-known biologist and ecologist in Russia. And uh, he's devoted his life and gotten a lot of flack for it for taking on the nuclear industry. In fact, uh, the co-authors of his book, Vasily and Alexei Nesterenko, father and son, Vasily was a key player in the nuclear power industry in Russia. And after the accident, shortly while it was going on, he got in a helicopter and became the only person to make, take measurements of the exposures that were being spread not just around Russia, but into Europe, Scandinavia, the UK, Canada, Japan. The uh, whole northern hemisphere has been blanketed, not with high doses, but the fear that the nuclear industry has is that if Yablokov's book, which is now out in reprint, gets full uh, distribution, which I don't know whether we're going to be able to pull it off or not, but uh, we're going to give it a try because uh, this book gives the lie to everything that the nuclear power industry has maintained. And if they recognize that two to five millisievert of exposure can cause the kinds of non-cancer effects, cancer effects, ecological effects that are outlined in this book, uh, they're going to be in real trouble. And it's up to us to make sure that the public generally knows what is contained in this book. It's one of a kind. The New York Academy of Sciences, its consulting editor is Janet Sherman, 80 years old. 
He's a contemporary of mine. I'm 78. And by the way, anytime you hear an organization appoint a senior policy analyst or a senior health analyst, make sure that they're at least over Medicare age, because they use that senior label very loosely. So uh, I think uh, I come by that label honestly. At any rate, uh, this book was first published by the New York Academy of Sciences. Its consulting uh, editor, Janet Sherman, is a member of the Academy, and she took the book to them and gave it to the editor and said, I think you ought to print this. Somebody got a hold of this book, a pre-publication copy, and went to the editor and said, you're not going to publish this junk science, are you? Well, it's already in press. I think it's coming off the press right now. So they couldn't stop it. They did the next best thing. They fired the editor at this very prestigious New York Academy of Sciences. The book went into print. They didn't print many copies. It was sold for $150. The regular copies sell for $130. Every month they published an annals of the New York Academy. But they forgot to tell the professors at the universities that they could read a free full text if their library subscribed to the annals. So they conveniently forgot that. Several weeks ago, February, uh, Yablokov decided to do something. The book was out of print, so he sent a letter to the Academy and requested the right to reprint. Amazingly, they agreed, and they sent her the legal documentation that they both signed. And if you have a copy of the book, the only mention of the New York Academy is on the inside cover because they gave him that right, and of course, their name is taken off because it's not their book anymore. They gave up the right to reprint, to Yablokov. The cover has on it three birch logs. The cover tells a big story, because you'll notice, if you have the copy, that there's light tan concentric circles in the center, and all of a sudden they turn uh, reddish brown in the outer circles. Well, those reddish brown circles happened after 1986, 25 years ago, this last April 26, was when this took place. And so it gave the, it gave the lie to the nuclear industry, it said, don't worry about mutations, they're not taking place. There's no effect from these low doses. They're too low to even be measured. I remember a day back when I was Vice President of Consumer Alliance of Michigan during the 70s that I was told at a hearing of the Public Service Commission, well, nuclear power is really too cheap to meter. And I told them then, I predicted that the back-end costs of closing the nuclear power plant would be much greater than the front-end costs, which were extravagant then. They didn't want to believe that either. At any rate, here's the book. Timothy Mousseau took this picture. Timothy Mousseau is given credit on the back of the book uh, as the uh, person who photographed these logs. He was driving along in Russia, and what was he doing there? He's associate vice uh, president for research at the University of South Carolina. What's he doing there for the last dozen years or so? He's been over with uh, his colleague, Anders Muller, from France, and they measure mutations, first of all, in barn swallows and then in other birds. And he just published on April 26 another article in a medical journal that documents further uh, bird losses due to mutation. So again, it gives the lie to what the nuclear industry has been peddling. I have a three-volume set from UNSCEAR 2000, the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation. That book has an appendix on Chernobyl. In it, they say the major health risk is psychosocial. In other words, it's all in your head. You're not sick from radiation. Just get your head straight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all it takes. I think I'll go out to a shrink and really get myself straightened out here. So any of these effects that have taken place that you'll read about in the book, and it's the only book to document non-cancer risks, a whole section on it, to children, adults, not just around Russia, but all through Europe, Scandinavia, and the UK, that have been measuring these non-cancer effects. So 
the book goes into in detail, and by the way, I counted the reference in the book, uh, there are 1,482. They are distilled down from 2,000 Russian language, Slavic language studies that the World Health Organization and the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, have had in their files for years but refuse to translate them. With good reason. They know what they're going to find. So, Yablokov and his colleagues took a look at 5,000 public, published papers in Russian journals. Who's going to pay to hire translators to translate these anyway? Certainly not the nuclear power industry. They don't want to have anything to do with these studies. So naturally, they've never been publicized until now. And Yablokov took it upon himself to put this uh, book together based upon 2,000 papers that he distilled down. And just, he couldn't summarize each one, but he points out the study, the name of the study, the data was published, the place it was published in the uh, reference list. So you can track those down, but a lot of them are Russian studies. So unless you understand Russian, you wouldn't be able to read them either. So uh, we're all in that kind of same boat, I think. But at any rate, uh, if you look at the index of the book, you'll notice how comprehensive it is. And it goes through a whole raft of these uh, issues that relate to aging, morbidity, disability, non-malignant diseases, oncologic diseases, mortality. You just look at the list. It's comprehensive. Atmospheric water, soil contamination, and uh, contamination of food and people. So uh, you can read it for yourself. It's got some technical language in it. We'll force you to go to a biologist maybe to explain what a becquerel is, but I think that you'll be able to figure out most of it. And uh, some of these exposures, for the very first time, we now find in print. Interestingly, Thursday I picked up my issue, a June issue of Harper's from the mailbox, and I opened it up, and lo and behold, Life in the zone, what we're still learning from Chernobyl. This is the story of Anders Moeller and Tim Rousseau from South Carolina and the bird studies that they're doing. So if you want to get to the library, if you can pick up a copy of the June issue of Harper's, there it is. An excellent uh, summary of what those men are doing and have been doing for the last decade to track these mutations in that area. and. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, I leave you with uh, a couple of thoughts. This book, Mousseau, the reason you see it out displayed, and you can pick up a copy at the back desk there. Uh, my colleague, John Martino, is uh, taking care of the sales. Many of you have already bought the book. Thank you very much. We've been able to get it from my printer. Mousseau called me and said, we have a printer. We've got the right to reprint. I said, yes, I've got a printer. I said, I think he can do the job. He's got a digital. He's got uh, a binary. I said, I think he can do it all. And so I went to the printer and he said, yep, I'll take care of it. I said, what's the best price? Well, he said, how many copies do you want? Well, I said, give me a 500 price and give me a 1,000 price. So he gave me a 1,000 price. It was about five bucks a book. I thought, you mean to tell me you can print this for that and make money? He said, yes. I said, do it. I said, I don't know how we're going to scrape together five or six thousand dollars, but we're going to give it a try. So I called six of my friends and I said, you know, I've got this project. You could really help me out if you give me a donation. Well, how much do you want? Well, whatever you can afford. And so people began to send in checks, and those six people contributed twelve hundred dollars. I took it immediately to the printer, and he said to me, What's your cut? I said, look, he said, I'm just a policy analyst. I don't want any money for this. He said, I'm just going to feed you the stuff. And if you can print this, and if you can mail it, and we'll fold in the price of mailing uh, to the, uh, uh, on, on a price list, which you see out there, I've got those that were handed out. And I said, we'll order direct from the printer. I don't want to handle any money. I said, just send the orders to you. You take care of it all. He said, OK. I'll do it. I'll package them, ship them. We'll get the rates for overseas rates as well as for U.S. And of course, the rate that we've got from the book rate is anywhere in the U.S. at that flat rate. And for nonprofit groups, it's 12 bucks as well as individuals. And that includes shipping and handling. I don't know where you're going to get a book with 347 pages for 12 bucks. Uh, 
uh, especially one that has medical information, as, as you know what they charge medical students for books like this. You're talking 80 to 150 bucks. So at any rate, Rousseau uh, got me to get the printer. We got 500 books waiting to be ordered. We brought several here. We hope you'll pick them up if you haven't bought one already. Just wander back there anytime and pick one up. John's at the table. We've got books there available. And we're selling them, of course, we save the shipping and handling because I, I'm the shipper and handler. So uh, <laughs> you get them for $10. Where are you going to get a book like this for $10? So at any rate, thanks for being here. Uh, I'll have to get the book back. We almost lost Detroit. I was all ready to write another book, and Kevin Camps will deal with it, dealing with the issue. And uh, we have a, 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 a certainly, uh, I could have written a sequel to it from Davis Bessie because we almost lost Cleveland. And I was all ready to do some writing on that one after I found out about the vessel head that, that had been corroded. Uh, Al Noonan has agreed to uh, give books out free to any students who are here. And first 20. The first 20. I don't know if we have 20 here. We have to step right up to we'll Step uh, right up now, and Hal's ready to give you a book if you're from one of the colleges or universities. Step right up and get your free book right now. Here it is. And uh, uh, also, we're. Uh, Speak to the fact that we're wrestling people who have uh, technical expertise to uh, yes, over and uh, write on the text. Uh, there is, is it out yet? Is it published yet, Hal? Do you have that statement, Hal? No, uh, it's, uh, Michael, the statement's coming out for permit three between September and November, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. It was going to be this fall, so. But we need, we need to know who is interested in helping us who has technical expertise now. So we're ready when it comes out because we have almost no time to get it ready. It'll, it'll, it's right. a big project. Yes. Okay. Any more. other students? Up and get your book. Any time during the uh, talk will be fine. Thank you very much. I'll get. Uh, we almost lost Detroit back on the table. Thank you very much for being here.